we have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. So I ask, why were rules and procedures changed just before the election in Pennsylvania and Georgia because of COVID? There are affidavits and emails that prove that voters in Democrat counties were treated differently than voters in Republican counties. Whether the poll watchers who have a legal right to view were forced out, pushed back as far as 60 feet, or not even allowed in to do what they had a legal right to do. Why would the Democrats want to ban election observers as they count the ballots? Did they not think they could win honestly? Why were there so many unsolicited ballots without verification signatures, ballots without postmarks? Why did a judge in Pennsylvania go outside his power to extend the deadline to receive mail-in ballots after the legislature, the only constitutional body permitted to do so, refused to do so? And why did a Trump-hating Secretary of State in Georgia agree with Stacey Abrams? And there is a lawsuit by Lynn Wood in the United States District Court in Georgia contesting those decisions. Why were signature requirements loosened and mail-in ballot signatures not required to match voter registration rolls? Pray tell. Now, I believe in the resurrection, but dead people voting? I don't think so. Like the mother who swore that her dead son was indeed dead, but that he voted twice. I don't think so, and neither did she. And those voting machines created by Dominion, stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Now, the left talks about bringing the country together after they created four years of chaos, accusing Trump of sowing doubt in our democracy, saying that his questioning of this election is a danger to America, as if the election process being changed in the middle of an election is no big deal, as if a little fraud is okay. And they lash out on any voting challenge, casting it as a temper tantrum by us. Really? Were the ones having the temper tantrum? The question ultimately is, will any of these allegations affect a sufficient number of votes to change the result of the election? Maybe yes, and maybe no. If the answer is President Trump did not win, then on January 20th, Joe Biden will be my president. But until then, President Trump is my president because America has only one president at a time. And in the meantime, please don't tell me that we cannot examine the ballots. Please do not tell me that we cannot pursue these irregularities. That's laughable. The left didn't stop on election day in 2016. And with all due respect, the left boycotted President Trump's inauguration. They marched in Washington in their pussy hats and had a hissy fit for four years. In fact, the left spied on Trump before he was even president. For three years, we heard he was an illegitimate president, that Russia tipped the scales in his favor, that he was a Putin puppet, that he was a fascist. We were spit at, refused service, cursed at, maligned, screamed at, boycotted, and canceled. Businesses were burnt, looted, and destroyed by the left. Chaos, defund the police. President Trump was not given a moment's peace. He was impeached over a legitimate phone call. It was nothing more than a political move. The group that brought us resist, impeach, and burn down cities extorted us with their chaos. Oh, no. We will pursue all legal avenues where there are irregularities, anomalies, illegalities, and corruption. And until the certification and the electors vote, that is not a lot to ask. 
So don't you dare ask us to just accept it and move on. And don't you dare tell me I'm being un-American by questioning what even a Supreme Court justice has put a hold on. And don't you dare ask us to go quietly into the night. And that's my open. Let me know what you think on my Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine.